This podcast is a local production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting and depends on the support of listeners like you. If you can, please donate today at mpbonline.org. And thanks. Hi, I'm Sarah Story, Executive Director of the Mississippi Arts Commission. Welcome to the Mississippi Arts Hour, a weekly conversation with creative Mississippians from across the state. Today, we are joined by Ryan N. Dennis, an American curator and writer who is currently Chief Curator and Artistic Director at the Mississippi Museum of Arts Center for Art and Public Exchange. And we will be discussing the, their upcoming exhibition, Piercing the Inner Wall, The Art of Dusty Bonchet. Welcome, Ryan. Hi, Sarah. So nice to be um, with you on air this, today. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, working from home today, as uh, maybe many of us listening still are in that in that um, process, and you know, balancing as we do, especially right now in these moments. Absolutely. And you're still pretty new to Jackson, and I and I just moved back, so we're kind of in the same boat, just navigating new jobs and new new times in um, a pandemic world. Completely. Um, which, you know, I've actually really been enjoying, you know, the transition and just enjoy, or, you know, finding about, finding out about Jackson and like what it has to offer in this, in this moment in time. So, um, you know, I tell everyone I've really enjoyed like going to, um, going to the mounds, right? Like in, in Natchez and, and just really exploring. The land here has been a really grounding and like kind of spiritual exercise for me and my family, um, but also, you know, um, <laughs> navigating the terrain that is right the Mississippi Museum of Art and learning about my colleagues right through, um, you know, through new modes of communication via like the Zoom room, et cetera, um, which has been really exciting. It's a it's a test of like strength in a lot of ways. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm Absolutely. sure you feel similar to that um, with your new position. Yeah, it's just it's it's not the same getting to know people by digital means um, as it is in person. But you know there are definitely positives as well that you know yeah. we're all just trying to focus on. So. Well, today we are talking about an upcoming exhibition, and I'm personally excited about this exhibition because it comes to you guys from the Ogden Museum of Southern Art, where I worked from 2012 to 2018. So I'm just thrilled that Dusty's work is coming back to Mississippi. So I'd love to just hear, in your words, just a little bit about what this exhibition is, is going to share with our our museum community. Um, yeah, so, you know, Piercing the Inner Wall, The Art of Dusty Bonjay um, is, you know, Dusty is um, is an artist who is widely considered to be Mississippi's like, artist to work consistently in a kind of modernist style. Um, I think um, folks will be really moved by uh, the kind of, um, uh, moved kind of um, between like figurative and, and really kind of cubist depiction of her of her life right from um, being in, in her Mississippi home in the 1930s and then you know going through a kind of period of a surrealism and into this kind of uh, more abstract expressionist style that really um, really defined the kind of uh, the nature of her work. I think you know I just actually got home from um, going to the galleries and so it was really wonderful you know at this point where you are you lay an exhibition out um, you know on uh, with your exhibition designer online so it was just nice to you know and obviously have a checklist but it was just nice to be in the galleries with the work um, and see it up close and personal um, I think think our I, my hope really is that um, you know folks connect to the many styles of uh, work that she navigated through and learn a bit about her life. Um, for those who, you know, don't know, I actually did not know um, Dusty Bonjay. And so it's been uh, rewarding to 
um, have some understanding <clears throat> about where she sits within this kind of abstract expressionist style as a woman as a as, and as a woman from Mississippi. So it's been, um, which I'm still learning. So <laughs> um, it's been a good, yeah, it's, it's been a good learning experience. And I'm just thrilled for um, folks to have some time to come into uh, the galleries and, you know, just be with the work. It's, it's really quite meditative and contemplative, you know, um, so. I think that, um what you're experiencing is what a, a lot of folks will be experiencing. I'm sure a few a few people here and there have heard of Dusty Bonjay, but probably are not as familiar with her work and absolutely have not had the chance to see a whole body of work at one time. So I think that will be really special. What struck you when you were unpacking the art, laying it out? What was surprising to you to see the work in person as a whole rather than on a screen as you've probably been studying it? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I mean, like scale, you know, the scale differences between the work, earlier work, is you know more studies and smaller, smaller kind of canvas um, paintings, and then um, you move into a kind of surrealism um, aspect of um, uh, she calls them keyhole people, or kind of like into the voids. And I just love the 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 play of, of scale, right? And also like coloration, um, just recognizing, which you don't, you know, it's hard to read, no matter how, you know, how high res an image can be, it's just hard to read how colors show up on a screen. And so um, it's, it's a lot of um, beautiful um, markings with color and just, you can, in my opinion, you know, really get a sense of um, how she was like sitting with work and her brush, her brush strokes, and um, just feel really kind of um, like intentional and and sensitive all at the same time. That's great. That's a great description. And is this all two D work? Did she make any three D or sculptural sculptural work? Yeah, in this actually. Show? I mean, majority of the, so the exhibition really comprises of about 65 paintings. I think there's a, a approximately 28 or 29 um, <clears throat> works on paper. And then um, um, the three sculptures. Um, and so you're familiar, Sarah, with the, the museum's uh, galleries. And so what I've done is <clears throat> the kind of smaller works, um, you know, when you walk into the museum, there has been a like the pre-Columbian works that are on view right in the kind of corridor. And so um, I've staged like her old um, workstation, paintings, et cetera, um, or paints, sorry, paints um, in some of the corridors. And then there are some sculptures of hers and um, smaller studies, which is really like an alluring, you know, opportunity, I think, for folks to, um, you know, walk their way down the corridor and then be met with, you know, these larger um, paintings. That's awesome. That's really exciting. So as, as you've been just learning more about the Mississippi Museum of Art and the story it tells, how do you think Dusty fits in into the story of, of Mississippi and, and our artist? I mean, it's a, a good question. You know, I'm now nine months in um, with the museum, and um, you know, there's been a lot of conversation and a and a push really to think about where artists, women, and artists of color um, find themselves, not only in our collection, but more. Um, with the kind of exhibition of their work. And so I think Dusty's um, work in this exhibition is a true kind of opportunity for us to um, demonstrate how, you know, um, the, the exhibitions that we're, we will take or, or produce um, is in line with our, you know, strategic plan, with the vision that Betsy Bradley, our director has for the museum, you know, really thinking about uh, regional context while um, finding ways to make connections to, you know, folks outside of the region, but still um, with the ethos of like um, regionality and womanness and 
um, people of color, which is, you know, an exciting kind of journey to, um, to be on and to also, you know, stimulate with the museum. Absolutely. And there are quite a few uh, women artists that were creating during that time. Have you found that Dusty had influences by women artists or, or were they were more male artists or what was she sort of thinking mm -hmm. through as she was creating? Yeah, you know, so some of the literature that I've been reading has really been about her kind of um, like her contemporaries, uh, Agnes Martin, Jackson Pollock, Robert Rauschenberg, you know, Clifford Still. Um, if you think about kind of male abstract expressionists, you know, uh, I think there has been a lot written about how, you know, these were her friends and these were uh, folks that were influential for her, but also that, she, you know, she had influence on. But as, you know, as I believe that artists are, you know, it's like um, the kind of point and direction that we have from these kind of male abstractionists. I think um, so much of where women sat in this kind of, um, in this historical like moment is still being um, shared in so many ways, right? And so the connections I think were there. It's just that um, maybe we're, late to catch up right and and just state what what some of those um who some of those folks were what if it was a, kind of a lee krasner um you know other um abstract expressionist women that we know but have not maybe made those connections to dusty and i'm hoping that this exhibition illuminates some of that for um for us internally but also with our viewers right um or at least allows for <clears throat> people to become more curious about where um women were in in the period of abstract expressionism because there are you know there are so many um you know central to uh, the production of a of, of painting during that time <clears throat> absolutely and it, it is it's exciting to to have a rediscovery of an artist's work and um, mm -hmm. of course just make all of those great connections from the names that are more household names um, a little bit more so than Dusty Bonjay. So that's great. I'm, I'm so just thrilled that you guys are thinking through this and producing this exhibition in Jackson. This is Sarah Story the executive director of the Mississippi Arts Commission. You are listening to the podcast version of the Mississippi Arts Hour. To have access to all Arts Hour interviews, subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcasting app. You can also listen to the show on MPB Think Radio every Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back to the Mississippi Arts Hour on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. I'm Sarah Story, the executive director of the Mississippi Arts Commission. Today, I'm talking with Ryan Dennis, the curator at the Mississippi Museum of Art, and we are discussing the upcoming exhibition, Piercing the Inner Wall, The Art of Dusty Bonjay. Thanks again, Ryan, for joining us today. So good to be on with you, Sarah. So I'd love to just hear more and just give folks listening a little bit better idea of Dusty Bonjay's life, you know, when her time she was born in Mississippi to her long journey around to different cities and, and back again. Um, of course. I mean, so <clears throat> uh, Jesse was born um, in August um, of 1903. She was raised in Biloxi. Um, she attended Blue Mountain College in 1919. And then at some point, I mean, she received her kind of parents' blessing to leave Mississippi 
and she went to study theater in Chicago in 1921. Um, I think around this time is when she met her husband, um, Archie Banger, who uh, was a painter and and what some have described, I guess, as like a, a kind of cowboy esque, um, you know, guy from um, from Nebraska. Um, I mean, Dusty and and Archie um, got married in in 1928, and they actually came back to Mississippi, had their wedding um, in, in Biloxi, and um, you know, from my you know, readings and, and, and just research on, on, um, on Dusty. It, it seems to me that, um, Archie had a really big influence on, on Dusty, just in terms of getting her, um, maybe to expand her like creative practice, right. into painting. Um, I mean, as a person who is married to a musician, I definitely understand the kind of, um, expansion that happens like creatively, right. Um, for uh, someone when you're in such a kind of close, intimate relationship. It appears to me, too, that Dusty was really um, like a kind of curious um, woman, a kind of, you know, already interested in acting in, in theater. And just, you know, when you are then with married to a painter um, and then moving to New York, right, your eyes and your um, senses just open up in so many different directions. And I think that is what we see within um, Dusty's, um, you know, of, 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 of painting, really. And you can see it in the galleries. Like, what's so, you know, what's so nice to see through her paintings is how the coast is represented. Um, and, like, time periods and also geographic locations have, in fact, influenced some of the work as well, right? I feel like there are some paintings <laughs> within the exhibition that literally like resonate certain feelings that I had while living in New York, right? Like it's just a little more grim, it's a little more like textured, it's a bit more, um, you know, grittier than say a scene, a landscape of beachside, you know, um, water and just like a free flowing, um, you know, movement within a painting that we see. So, you know, um, uh, Dusty and, and, um, and her husband, Archie, um, you know, had a, I think, intense kind of beautiful life together, but he also um, got really sick um, not too long after they were married. And, and um, you know, they got Let's see, they got married in 1928, and then he passed away in 1935. And between that time, she, um, excuse me, she had a son, um, Lyle, and um, he was born in, um, I believe, 1929, right? And so if you, you know, the, um, Archie passes away in 1935, and then she has this life of, you know, being a painter, but also being a, a single mother. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, Dusty has been, she was a fortunate woman, right? Um, and so I don't, I think even within her fortune is for me recognizing um, uh, her, her womanness and her single, you know, being a single mother um, while still actively uh, pursuing a kind of painting career during the time that um, this was, you know, in the 40s, 50s, 60s was still quite a significant kind of um, mark for her. That's amazing. And, and you know, for her to, to even go to college as a woman um, during that time what was not, was, was fairly rare. So that's amazing that, that she went to Blue Mountain College and then, and then even went on to Chicago to do theater. Um, mm -hmm. do, are you, can you see the time period in her paintings change after after Archie passed? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think what you what you see or at least sense is um, there. You know, they're just so dry, 
like drastic in their, <laughs> you know, in their like explorations. And I think one just might be very curious, like, wow, what was going on in this woman's life for these, you know, expressions to be as like drastic as they were. And so, um, you know, obviously for people who are just kind of coming to know this, this painter, you know, I think um, it's, it's always, I'm always really curious about, yeah, what people were going through. Like why, why the decision to make these kind of um, like um, voids or, you know, the keyhole people, more surrealist kind of um, paintings or, you know, sometimes people just need to not um, like put too much into say a painting and then you have um, something more like cerebral but also very bodily right like within these kind of abstracted moments so I think you can see it and I think um, it is felt through not only her like life transitions but where she literally was like at a moment in time right like between Mississippi or <clears throat> New York, et cetera. Absolutely. Um, did and did she show where 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 was her career mostly known? Was she known in, in New York or on the coast during her lifetime? Um, good question. I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, it is escaping me, which is really terrible but there was um, a gallery that she showed with in New York that really kind of opened up a lot of um, you know support and opportunity for her um, which I think was really kind of significant I am so sorry I'm forgetting the name of this right um, the gallerist right now um, you know, there is also something really interesting, I think, about, like, artists that come from the South um, and and how kind of, quote, unquote, well-known they are. I mean, I think, obviously, during the time that Dusty was, <laughs> was working, she was probably overshadowed by the number of, you know, like, male artists dominating, you know, <clears throat> um, <laughs> opportunities you know, I think we know what that story looks like. And so, you know, her, I guess, well-knownness is happening now through an exhibition like this. And, um, you know, it's my hope, I, I, you know, I, I, I you, we, you and I talked a little bit about this a few days ago that, you know, um, there might be other opportunities where this exhibition travels, say, to Chicago or to New York to really make the connections of her um, her life in the places like that she has touched and with her with her with her paintings as you kind of influence you know I think it would it would be such a great opportunity for 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 her legacy and her family as well absolutely and it's it's always um, fascinating to just see when exhibitions like this do travel to other cities you always discover new things about the artists along the way i'm sure you've you found that to be right. true as well <laughs> completely completely <laughs> which is exciting yeah so what uh, is there a piece when you've been looking through the exhibition you know putting it together laying it out is there is there a piece or a series that has really struck you personally hmm um, good question, Sarah. <laughs> you know, I it's, it's, sometimes I try not to get like too, um, like too connect, like not too connected, but like have like favorites in this show. But I will say, um, she has a series of, uh, they're called voids. So they're essentially these, um, Kind of large scale well they're still very like surreal um circular drawings pretty intense coloration um that was um done really like in the 80s actually um like 
I just find those to be really um, stunning. Um, they're, I don't know, I think it's like a, con there is something within those paintings that connect to um, her earlier paintings, but just more like mature almost, more um, refined and kind of um, directed. But also, I mean, I'm a, um, I'm a, a, a person that meditates quite often. And so um, there is, I think within this section, there just seems to be something like spiritual about like an investigation that she might have been going through. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to um, Bradley, who was the exhibition curator from the Ogden when he um, gives his talk which will be on February 20th. Um, it, it will be a, 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 a virtual program, but I'm really looking forward to hearing how um, some of these really distinct sections, like have, how he was thinking about them when he organized it. But yeah, I mean, I'm really I'm moved by the void section and some of her later work, um, specifically, yeah, between like 1982 to 87, um, these really lovely like red red orange um drawings or paintings uh that's one of my favorites you know if we will is called uh, big red and passage and they're just um scale wise it's again they're like scale is uh, has have maximized within you know this body of work and um there's just something more yeah intentional and like refined about I guess the way that she was working in, in in this time period, which I loved. That's great. Yeah, and you you mentioned there were there was a, a wide range of scale in this exhibition, so so folks will be able to see maybe the process of how she thought about her work from studies on paper to to larger scale. Is that completely? Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, and I always love seeing studies. I mean, it's one of my favorite things about um, like. <clears throat> yeah, an artist, you just get to see the process and what changed, you know, you as a viewer get to study what they were, <laughs> you know, kind of looking at, which is great. Yeah, and, and just how the marks change from smaller scale to larger scale, just themes that they're thinking through. I agree, it's always one of my favorite parts <laughs> of an exhibition. So actually, I've never seen her studies, so that will be a, a real treat for me. This is Sarah Story, the Executive Director of the Mississippi Arts Commission. You are listening to the podcast version of the Mississippi Arts Hour. To have access to all Arts Hour interviews, subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcasting app. You can also listen to the show on MPB Think Radio every Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Hi, I'm Walt Grayson. You can now listen to the wild, weird, and wonderful stories of Mississippi with Mile Marker. Some of the big names that travel up and down the highways, obviously Elvis and Johnny Cash, and you have Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins. Join me as we hit the roads of Mississippi on Mile Marker. Johnny Cash suggested that Carl write a song called Blue Suede Shoes that was all kind of created with Aaron Amory. You can listen by going to mpbonline.org slash radio or by using your favorite podcasting app. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back to the Mississippi Arts Hour on MPB. I'm Sarah Story, the Executive Director of the Mississippi Arts Commission. And we're joined today by Ryan Dennis, our curator over at the Mississippi Museum of Art. And today we're discussing a new exhibition that will open in February, Piercing the Inner Wall, the Art of Dusty Bonjay. And Dusty Bonjay, of course, was an artist from Biloxi. And we are just so excited to have her work in Jackson. Um, Ryan, so we were talking a little bit offline about the title of the exhibition. And I know this is an unfair question because you did not curate the show and you're discovering it along the way as we all are right now. But I'm struck by the title. So it's called Piercing the Inner Wall art of Dusty Bonjay. And there's this great quote where Dusty talks about this concept. She says, 
The inner wall is, of course, up to you. It is a highly individual thing that surrounds the real person, not the superficial covering. I've always had the feeling that thoughts, ideas, and emotions can penetrate just like an arrow. They go straight through to that inner wall. What? So as you've been looking looking at this body of work and, and, and taking it in, sitting with it, thinking through it, what, what does that mean to you, the piercing the inner wall? Um. I, well, first, I think it's such a it's such a lovely quote to bring out. Um, I think um, that quote kind of makes me think about this kind of concept of investigation with her work, or like a kind of curiosity and like. Again, this kind of exploration of like, um, like maybe a whatever is kind of possible within without limitations, right? I don't think, and maybe it's just by um, maybe Dusty's upbringing, a kind of um, ability, right, to not um, dream with barriers, right? Um, seems like this exploration of kind of freedom and growth and et cetera is reflected within that quote to me. And you can also see it, <clears throat> I think, within the artwork um, and as you move through the exhibition. Um, maybe in a lot of ways, it's just not being kind of like tethered to one thing or another, but um, giving yourself a kind of freedom and expansiveness to um, <laughs> try what works for your spirit and your soul in a moment's time throughout your life, right? Like this life that we have it is potentially going to be long for for us, you know, whatever that means, right? Relatively speaking, but, um, you know, being kind of um, active in your pursuit, um, yeah, that's what it, you know, that's what it means to me. And, and again, I think what, what will be really exciting is to hear from Bradley and to hear like his thinking behind you utilizing uh, maybe aspects of that quote, you know, within, within the title. But um, that's my perspective from n not the, you know, organizing curator, but um, it seems kind of telling, right? Um, what do you think? Yeah, I think Oops, you're can right. Can I interview you a little bit? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm just curious like, what your reflection is to that. No, I, I agree. I, I think that um, Dusty, just through her work and the little bit that I, I've seen, it is very reflective. It's reflective of her emotions, uh, as you mentioned, the life around her, whether it was New York or the coast, you know, going through a death bring life into the world um, and just mm -hmm. it, it, just one person's exploration of all of that and what I, one of my favorite things about a work of a singular artist is the opportunity for for us as viewers to really explore what it means to us individually I mean this was one woman's life and, and one woman's experience mm -hmm. but we all can learn and grow and see something in that you know maybe we see something new or maybe we see something in ourselves or recognize recognize an aspect of her mark making or her her mm -hmm. quotes or her uh, what she's thinking through um and so I, I i'm excited it's great to hear what you take away from the exhibition it's going to be exciting to hear what bradley Summerall, the the curator says and then it'll be great to just hear from the community what they experience walking through through this exhibition by, by one woman who you know mm -hmm. lived in 19 what was it 1903 to 1993 so it was mm -hmm. a, a long long life Night, yeah exactly i mean in her career right spanned between the 1930s and the 90s when i mean just like within a period of an american history all of you know so many things were happening <laughs> in those yeah. time periods so um it's interesting but also you know i think what i've also kind of come to understand maybe about Dusty as this um, 
Um, uh, maybe just like um, her up, like her upbringing, and and um, and being. Yeah, she just seemed like a very like a very southern woman, right? <laughs> um, and um, and maybe really had a kind of blessed life to you know move and, and navigate in the way that she did. So it's you know all of those things are really kind of fascinating when you think about like such uh, a a time period of like between the 30s and the 90s with so much going on. I'm sure. Um, but then situating her within that, you know, within that time frame is just really interesting to think about. Absolutely. Yeah, it's exciting. Well, we, um, I definitely look forward to seeing the exhibition and, and just learning more along the way. And there there will be some resources maybe online that you had mentioned before that, that um, visitors and, and people that are interested in could check out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we are planning uh, a number of programs um, between the opening, which um, happened on February 20th, and the exhibition is on view until May 23rd. Um, so between kind of March and, and May, uh, we'll have more gallery um, talks. There will, um, you know, potentially be some art on film and studio visits um, with local artists, um, you know, around... Uh, um, kind of mixed media and um, an abstract work and then a family day will take place um, on May 1st from 9.30 to 12.30, which is um, a fun uh, filled, I think, day for, um, you know, Miss Jackson, the Mississippians, um, really inspired by the exhibition and other exhibitions that we'll have on view at that time. That's great. And, and let's I'd love to hear a little bit more about what else is coming up. What, what else are you working on over there at the museum? Yeah, what's so on we view? Have, uh, yeah, what's on view are um, New Symphony of Time, which is our um, uh, exhibition um, around our permanent collection, will um, be on view. And we are also working on um, Betty Starr, Call and Response, which is an exhibition organized by LACMA um, in Los Angeles. But we are bringing that down um, to Mississippi, which is very exciting. Um, that will happen April 10th through July 11th. So um, working on that, and then of course the kind of fall exhibition, which I'll just plug, is the Mississippi Invitational, uh, which will happen August 14th through October, um, mid-October. <clears throat> That's great. And so are you what is the process for that? Are you guys, um, do you have a juror that's working on that now or are you guys curating it internally? The Actually, we, yep, the Invitational is um, being curated by Danielle Burns-Wilson, who is a curator based in Houston, Texas. Um, she is in the process or nearly almost done with a studio visit <clears throat> with um, folks who submitted work. And um, we are you know, just working Towards, I mean, she's been introduced to so many <laughs> Mississippian artists, which is really fantastic. Um, I selected Danielle. Um, she's one of a dear friend and a colleague, but just thinking about regionality and really amplifying right voices and curators of our region. Um, so I'm I'm very excited to see her perspective and what she produces um, for us. That's exciting. I always enjoy seeing that exhibition. Is it every year or is it every other year? The invitation? Mm -hmm, every year. Every year. Yeah, that's great. And so what tell us a little bit more about, um, I believe you have a new artist in residence as well at Kate. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I, we do. Um, <clears throat> Shiny Peters is our 2021 um, artist in residence. Um, we were we received funding from the Mellon Foundation um, to do new um, residencies. So we have funding for 2021, 2022, and 2023, which we're so excited about. Um, Shawnee Peters is a Harlem-based um, artist, but her and her family are actually moving to New Orleans um, in the next few weeks. So um, her 
kind of practice has is so aligned with um, CAPE in terms of the values which are centered around equity and transparency and truth. Um, Shawnee comes from uh, years of kind of um, weaving uh, community um, projects and resident voices with, um, you know, educational opportunities that then um, create um, like objects, et cetera. So she is working well, you know, right now um, we are working through um, like care-centered work. And so identifying women, uh, mothers, um, people of color who um, are making, or she will make connections, if you will, um, around care-centered practices, especially, you know, after the year that we all just came out of. Um, so our first kind of phase of the project is to identify like a group of um, community workers, um, which we are doing right now and um, really establishing some relationships. So we're in a phase of relationship building, which is, you know, really kind of making a lot of adjustments because of, you know, this COVID moment where, you know, you would typically in previous times just like meet up for lunch or like have these, you know, moments where people can just be in real life and real meet, time meet someone in their home exactly all <laughs> of those things and so um it's been it's been an interesting and I think learning moment for all of us to, to how to build new relationships when we are not physically like and you know in in one in one another space and those types of conversations also happen so organically but um so we're building her project out and up with um, residents of Jackson and um, we look forward to um, having a kind of public program where Shani will introduce herself to our public um, by way of a lecture in the Zoom room at some point in the um, next I think in early March, April um, and then um, identifying uh, students and mothers and other workers that will um, kind of expand uh, these community projects that she is proposing with us. So I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to her. And I've worked with Shani as well. Um, she is just so community minded. And when we think about CAVE, I mean, there, there are, there are a lot of artists, I think, doing kind of um, socially engaged practices, but um, she's just so thoughtful. And I think she would make just a perfect, she makes such a perfect addi addition to, you know, the values that we're trying to set out at the museum so stay tuned <laughs> that's, that's great and that's great to hear that um that it's tied around care centers i know that's been difficult for so many people as you mentioned especially in the past year um and you you have a young child so i'm sure you're you're feeling <laughs> feeling that very oh, yeah. real right it's now. very real mm -hmm. <laughs> um i also love that um that it, you're connecting with an artist that is going to be working the community in that way through the museums program. I think a lot of people, when they think about museums, they think, oh, you go and, you know, see some art on a wall or maybe a sculpture in the grass. Mm -hmm. What what does that mean to you to be able to have this this other program uh, that, that does go out into the community? I mean, I always, you know, I come from a, um, a kind of background where um, community practice and building is like this part of my life, right? It's not just about work. It, it I mean, it has made its way through work, but um, finding ways that a museum can expand its walls and really, you know, maybe even be uncomfortable, right? Like find and identify what makes the kind of expansion uncomfortable so that we can then bridge um, these gaps of um, who walks into the walls, but also how do people engage with like public work out, outside of the campus of the museum? Um, how can there be interventions, you know, um, within other parts of Jackson that seem just kind of uh, again, like it's an intervention. So there are these opportunities that are able to um, happen that piques one's curiosity to hopefully have some engagements that um, are 
met at the museum, but elsewhere. So I'm just really keen on finding ways to um, expand that and develop it at the museum. And I think through a program like CAPE, we're able to do so, but also, you know, through exhibitions like Leonardo Drew, which is on view right now, or, um, you know, thinking about public art and just um, an exhibition making and um, and commissions in more, you know, truly expansive ways that are engaging and allow for us to do our work and um, meet people where they are. It's really important. That's great. Well, Ryan, we're just, we're so glad that you're in Jackson. We're just thrilled that you're a part of our arts community now and um, just great to be you. here. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it. This is Sarah Story, the Executive Director of the Mississippi Arts Commission. You are listening to the podcast version of the Mississippi Arts Hour. To have access to all Arts Hour interviews, subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcasting app. You can also listen to the show on MPB Think Radio every Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Hi, I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, Professor of Internal Medicine and Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. On the original Southern Remedy, we answer questions about all aspects of your health and share some of the latest medical information in the news. You can listen to the show on Wednesdays at 11 on MPB Think Radio, or you can subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on 